believers don't understand that we are being proved in these last days. We are being tested. And you will see as we read Deuteronomy 13. Take heed and be aware. What this interfaith dialogue, this intercultural dialogue, in which Francis and the Grand Imamas are, as well as the UAE and the rest of the world, when they call unity, when they call dialogue, when they call fraternity of the world for the sake of peace, what they are really doing. Do not fall for the snare. Okay. We are being tested. We're going to see three scenarios in Deuteronomy chapter 13. And you will realize the outcome of what God calls for those who are on his side to do to those who aren't. But we're not called to do that in these last days. We leave that to the Father and Christ when Christ comes back. But as we read, you have to understand why he commanded these things to be done because of what we read in the book of Revelation. What those who receive the mark of the beast do to those who refuse. Okay, let's read Deuteronomy 13. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give thee a sign or a wonder. So as we're reading this, many of you, your minds may very well have went to the book of Revelation when it speaks about the second beast rising. Whether this beast rising is a kingdom with the same like-mindedness that does this or whether it is an individual. Okay. For the Lord spoke about many false prophets that rise. Okay. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods. See, in scriptures, when they speak about gods, it's not only false religions and faiths. Gods, these gods are idols, okay? These very well individuals could have you going after other doctrines. Cause ha could have you going after the ways of the world. Could have you going after things that are not of Jesus, of God, okay? It says, let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them, okay? It says, Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. So when we read that, we go back to the book of Revelation where the second beast tells the inhabitants that they should make an image to the beast. I'm still trying to figure that out, what that truly means. When they speak about, when he tells them, make an image to the beast, I'm asking myself, and I'm still taking it to prayer, asking the Lord, what exactly does that mean? Is he telling, is he telling the inhabitants that they should mirror themselves to the beast in admiration? Just as we are called to follow Jesus, who is the explicit image of our Father, or when he said, make an image to the beast, are the people making up their own laws, their own statutes, their own judgments, putting bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter, and bringing it about to be a law, laws, ways that they want the whole world to live by, 
and anyone that does not live by the way that man has come together and put together to live by, which is evil and dark, that they will slay them. I'm still trying to figure that out. Either way, thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dream of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you. Okay, so what's happening? There are these false prophets and these dreamers of dreams are being used to test us. Some fall for it, some don't. To know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Okay? Those who love the Lord their God with all their heart and all their soul, we see them in the fifth seal. Slain for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Okay? Verse 4, this is what we need to cleave on to, even to the end. You shall walk after the Lord your God, and fear him, and keep his commandments, and obey his voice. And you shall serve him, and cleave unto him. Okay, what we see in these last days when the world is seeking unity to come together in the faith, in the culture, dialogue, Abraham Accord, Abraham House, human fraternity, all of these things that they're doing is to draw us away from God. You reread throughout Revelation, we are called, this is the patience of the saints. These are they that keep his commandments. If not, you will worship the beast. Because everybody else is doing that. You will worship darkness. You will worship unrighteousness and have pleasure in it. But we're called to walk after the Lord our God, not after the beast. Not after the dragon. Not hearkening to the, the beast that rises up out of the earth but to fear God and to keep his commandments, not the beast's commandments, not the false prophet's commandments, and to obey his voice, not the voice of the beast or the false prophet, and to serve God in Jesus, not the beast, not the false prophet, and to cleave unto him. And listen what it says in verse 5. And that prophet... Or that dreamer of dreams, okay? No difference than the second beast that rises up out of the earth. No difference than these false prophets Jesus said that would rise in these last days and these false Christs, Christians, shall be put to death. Why? Because he, they had spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. Okay? It's no difference than what we read in Jude. Certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to the condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of the Lord our God into lasciviousness, and even denying the Lord that bought them. Okay, no difference than those who preach through the flesh, through covetedness, with vain words, making merchandise of us. No difference. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. They are no different. Okay? And then also you have these other faiths, quote-unquote idols made up that are seeking to draw us away from the truth and unto fables. All will be subject to judgment because they seek to turn us away. We read where it speaks about the land of Egypt, but in our case, it speak, this is talking about sin. Let's read that again in blue. He had spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of sin and redeemed you out of chains and yokes in which you were in to thrust you out of the way what is the way the narrow way the straight and narrow 
to thrust you out of the way of Christ, which the Lord commanded you to walk in. So shall you put the evil, okay? You hear that? The Lord calls that inner faith dialogue, inner culture, human fraternity, this unity in which the world is calling, okay? This false peace, he calls it evil. So shalt thou put away the evil from the, in the midst of thee, okay? So as we see how the Lord is destroying this earth, especially with fire, it is the fire of his jealousy. You have to understand that the Lord is very jealous. He even says it. He doesn't hide it. He said, I, he said, he even says his name. He said his name is jealous. And he even says he's jealous. So for what the inhabitants are doing in this world, they're only boiling up his jealousy. And there's those who truly know the Lord, working with the principalities and powers in high places, they are purposely provoking him by doing these things, by calling unity. You think it's just the inhabitants of the world, the leaders of the world, that are just calling unity on their own, calling human fraternity on their own? No. They are, they are siding. They work with the principalities, powers, and high places. They do much to provoke the Lord, that they may accuse many here on earth to provoke the Lord, to destroy us. But I pray we keep our eyes open and don't go after these things, but to stay true to the Lord, faithful in keeping his commandments. Though you fall, get back up, get back up, get back up. Do not give in to these things. Here we have another scenario now. Okay, Verse 6 reminds me of when Jesus said we'll be betrayed by our, by our brothers, our sisters, our mothers, our fathers. Okay, These that betray us, they are on the side of the world. Which is, which is on the side of the beast. It says, If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or thy wife, or of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thy own soul, okay, these are worldly people now, entice thee secretively. Okay, they are in the flesh. They don't reverence God. They're not in love with God like that for them to do what they're about to do. Saying, let us go and serve other gods. See, that lets you know that the heart is not right. Your heart is not right with the Lord. For who will tell you that? Who would say to another brother or sister, let's go sin. Let's go do something and that they know in their heart is not of Jesus. It's not of the Father. Okay? Like a brother and sister say, oh, let's go to the club. Let us, let's go smoke. Let's go drink. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. But that's not of Jesus. We're not of this world. Oh, let's go learn about this faith and see how they serve their God. You know? Let's go intermingle. That's going after other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers. Okay, when they talk about fathers, they're talking about the holy fathers. We're not talking about the rebellious fathers. Our, our holy fathers and the holy prophets were devoted and dedicated to the Lord. Okay? Namely, and listen to what it says in verse 7, namely of the gods of the people which are round about you. Okay, we're talking about this in the faith now. Nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him. Neither shall thy eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare him. Neither shalt thou conceal him. Why does he say that? We go back into the book of Revelation. Look what these same individuals, okay, it's the same spirit that's working in these last days that will side with the world, okay? That will side with the beast, receiving his mark, hearkening unto his words, hearkening unto his commandments, Loving his image, worshiping him, and forsaking the Lord will come against us and slay us. This is why he says the things that he says, nipping it in the bud. Because if this thing gone unchecked, we see what occurs in the Revelation. Listen to what he says in verse 9. We're not called to do this now, okay? We leave that up to the Father and the Son. When Jesus comes back, he's going to handle that. 
This is what we read in 2 Thessalonians. The Lord comes in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These are those who trouble us. But thou shalt surely, you hear what it says? Thou shalt surely. I'll let you read that your own because YouTube is very poised on their censorship. Okay, verse 10. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he died because he had sought the thrusty away from the Lord thy God. What do you think the second beast is doing? Which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. The Lord delivered us from sin out of chains and yokes. And to say that somebody's just going to come along and try to bring us back into sin, back into those yokes. No, that is our soul. That person doesn't care about us to bring us back into sin, back into yokes. But we, for we're told the day you eat is the day you die. That the second prophet, he's not looking after no one's soul. He's looking to damn everyone, but deceives many. You see how he deceives. He has the false miracles. These miracles are from devils. These miracles are from demons he's doing. They're doing. That false prophet, prophets, whichever one it is, because it is a kingdom, is not looking out for our good. It's not looking out for our soul. That, fra that false prophet, those false prophets are adulterers. They're not faithful to the Lord. And they seek to bring everyone to be unfaithful along with them. Okay? This reminds me of these false churches. This reminds me of the Catholic Church. Unfaithful. And seeking to draw all denominations in Christianity in its unfaithfulness. To go a sleeping with other religions false. To share in their whoredoms. We say no. Verse 11. And all Israel shall hear and fear and shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. This interfaith dialogue. This interfaith cultural, this human fraternity, the Abrahamic house of supposedly worship is all wickedness. To bring fury and jealousy in the face of God. But we all are being proved whether you love the Lord your God. Those who love the Lord their God, they will not mingle themselves in this falsehood. This is a false peace. For we know that the wrath of God is upon all men who do not accept Jesus, who do not obey Jesus. How can there be peace? They said, oh, unity, interfaith dialogue to bring about world peace. But brethren, we know that there's no peace. Jesus even said, I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. Now we have another scenario. Okay. If thou shalt hear say in one of thy cities, which the Lord thy God had given thee to dwell there, saying, certain men, the children of Bilal, are gone out from among you. Okay. We read that same phrase in 1 John, where it speaks about the Antichrist within our own faith. They went out from us. They were not of us. If they were of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest. Okay? They went out that they may be made that, that they may be made revealed. And have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which you have not known. Okay. Listen to what it says in verse 14. Then shalt thou inquire 
and make search and ask diligently and behold, if it be true and a thing certain that such abominations, you hear what the Lord says? The Lord says that is abomination. So if that is an abomination for what's going on in verse 13, what do you think interfaith dialogue is in the eyes of God? What do you think this human fraternity, this unity of trying to bring all religions together to find a common ground? What do you think it is in the eyes of the Lord? The Lord says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. I've seen and read many professing believers that are in agreement with the interfaith dialogue. That are in agreement with this Arabic house. That are in agreement saying that we can find common ground with idols. These other faiths with your idols how do you find common ground with a living god and idols for we know there's only one true god his name is jehovah and jesus christ is his son what common ground are you finding with idols these faiths do not exist get that it does not exist it is of the figurative of one's imagination. We read that in the book of Romans. The people, they knew God, but they refused to acknowledge him as God. Neither were they thankful, but they, their vain hearts have become darkened. They begin to imagine what God would be like. It's in their minds. And it handed down from generation to generation to generation. This is what we have now. There's no such thing as inner faith. That is confusion. That is mental illness. But those who are wise, the saints, they keep the commandments. They follow after the Lord Jesus because there's no other God. It says, thou shalt surely smite the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword. What do you think Jesus, do, Jesus is going to do when he comes here? No different than what we're reading. Destroying it utterly. And all that is therein, and the cattle thereof, with the edge of the sword. And thou shalt gather all the spoil of it into the midst of the street thereof, and shall burn with fire the city. What does that sound like? Babylon. What's going on right now here in this world? God is destroying this world with fire. The intense, the intensif the intensification of the heat rays, year by year by year. This is purposely done. This is what they call climate change. It isn't climate change. It's the inhabitants have changed. His laws, his statutes, his judgments. Therefore, he's destroying this earth. It is his jealousy. When you see the fires blazing, it is his jealousy. When you see the floods rising, it is his jealousy. When you see the hurricanes and tornadoes, it is his jealousy. The mountains are collapsing, the volcanoes erupting, it is his jealousy. The animals plagued and dying, people dying left and right, it is his jealousy. The living God is a jealous God. He even says in Isaiah, they have transgressed my laws. They have transgressed the laws. They changed the ordinance. They've broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, the curse has devoured the land. It is the curse that the Lord has brought about this earth. It said climate change. No, the inhabitants have changed his law, his statutes, his judgments. They said he will not see our last end. And it shall be a heap forever. It shall not be built again. Babylon is fallen. Babylon has called the world to drink of its wine. Who is Babylon? Babylon is a spirit. And that spirit is in people. Okay? That spirit of Babylon is of the principalities, powers, and high places. It's of the rulers in heaven, the rulers of darkness, 
the rulers of wickedness. It is of the spirit of Satan. And that spirit works in individuals. Okay. We see how that spirit rests. That spirit sits. That spirit is no different than how the Holy Spirit rests upon us. I was reading Acts, the book of Acts earlier, when our fathers were in the upper room. They were all of one accord. Then a strong wind blew inside of the upper room where they were. And they seen tongues clove like fire. And what did it do? It sat upon every single one of them. We need to compare spiritual things with spiritual things. The Holy Spirit rests upon every single one of them. He sat upon every single one of them. No different than that spirit of Babylon. Which is of the principalities, powers in high places, the rulers of darkness, the spiritual wickedness that rest upon men and women in these last days. Which caused them to do the things that they do. Okay? Just as it shows, you see with the baffled hand, hand sign, as above, so below. That's exactly what they're showing you. But, for us, the kingdom of heaven, we say, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Alright? And there shall cleave nothing of the cursed thing. Okay? It is a cursed thing. The Lord showed me when I first read that uh, article about the NFA dialogue. This was back in 2019. It was a long article. They were speaking about NFA dialogue. It was a Francis, the grand imam, signed a document to promote NFA dialogue globally. I took it to prayer and I asked the Lord, was, was this something that we need to look out for? Was this something important or was it nothing? I had a dream where the Lord spoke to me twice. And every time he spoke, I woke up and I wrote down what he said. One was cursed. He called it a cursed thing. I wrote it down. And I went back to sleep. Then I heard selling. For many of you who don't know what selling is, spiritually selling means promoting. Okay, so when you hear about buying and selling, not speaking about literal buying and selling, but promoting. Not only promoting, but you're receiving. Buying and selling, you promote and you receive. Jesus came and he sold the gospel to us. He promoted it. Those who received it, they bought it. Okay, this is spiritual terms. And then the third thing he said, eight years. This was back in 2019. I asked him about the eight years. I never got an answer with the eight years. Now, 2021, it is six years. Okay? I'm not sure if he's allowing this thing to happen for this amount of time. I'm not for certain. It's something that I would need to take in prayer before I even bring it to you. Because I don't want to bring anything false or deception to you. And there shall cleave nothing of the cursed thing to thy hand that the Lord may turn from the fierceness of his anger. Okay? If that if that would be the fierceness of his anger, what do you think this interfaith dialogue would be? Okay? Mingling with idols. We're not called to be friends of the world anyhow. We're not called to be of the world. We're not called to love it. We're not called to serve anything but the Lord our God. Okay? What this interfaith dialogue is all of the flesh. We're not supposed to be in the flesh. God isn't happy. This is not of him. He does not co-sign interfaith dialogue. Before he winked at all nations in their idols. But as we read what Apostle Paul said, now he is called all men unto repentance he ain't winking no more he sent jesus jesus is at the right hand until the father sends him again to bring judgment upon the earth unto the ungodly the unrepentant them that trouble those who keep the commandments of god and refuse to bow to the image of baal that's what it is that beast and who he serves who they serve baal it's the last day's bell worship. These faiths, denominations, which have twisted the words of God, commandments of man, that's bell worship. 
What is Baal? Baal is the god of many religions. Reading kings. Baal's idols or Baal's prophets were like 500, maybe plus. These are of all faiths. We're not joining into that Baal worship. We're not bowing our knees to that image of the beast, which is no difference than the image of Baal. Falsehood. That the Lord may turn from the fierceness of his anger and show thee mercy and have compassion upon thee and multiply thee as he has sworn unto thy fathers, which thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to keep all his commandments, which I commend thee this day, to do that which is right in the eyes of the Lord thy God. Okay? So when they speak about this coexistence, we're not a part of that. Okay? We are here to testify that God has sent Jesus to save the world from sin. To save the world from deceit, from falsehood. Because these false Christian leaders are not doing that. They're speaking the ways of the world. They're telling the world that there can be peace if we coexist. Knowing that there ain't no peace, how can there be? When Jesus said it himself, I didn't come to bring peace but a sword. How can there be peace, you false Christians? How can there be peace when you know the people are still walking in sin? Yes, you say, let's find common, common when there's no repentance. How can there be peace when you know that the wrath of God is poured upon this earth and is going to be poured upon man? How can these false Christians see the destruction that's going on about this earth and speak aligned with the world saying climate change? It's not climate change. It's the judgment of the living God upon the inhabitants. It would have to be the God. It, ha it would have to be the true children of God, the remnant of the Lord, to lay down their lives, to cry out to these people that it's the judgment of the Lord. They must come to repentance. Why? Because these leaders aren't doing it. These pastors and these deacons and these bishops and these popes aren't doing it. They're no different than the world. They're no different than these scientists which speak about climate change. How can these pastors and these scientists truly sit at a table and speak on climate change and say, oh, we found a resolution? That doesn't exist. That's false. Let a true man and woman of God, filled with the Holy Spirit, sit with the scientists. They wouldn't find a resolution. Unless that scientist has come to his understanding and repent. Because that man or woman of God would have sat down with that scientist or whomever, looked him in the eyes and said, you know what's going on here in this world? It is because the sins of the nation that this world is going through the things that it's going. There's only one living God and his son, Jesus Christ. And he is destroying this earth because of a lack of repentance, because of wickedness and sins. If the people would repent, he would heal their land. That scientist is not going to align himself with that truth unless the Lord opens his heart to do so. I'm baffled, but I shouldn't be baffled. Because a lot of these people that say they are Christians are false. Jesus even told us, let no man deceive you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he. And shall deceive many. But I fret not. Because the Lord will send his people. Burning in his fire and his jealousy. In the midst of coexistence. You will see it yourself. In the midst of coexistence. Because it will happen. You will see it yourself. The spirit of the Lord will be stirred upon his people. To preach the gospel. And they will try to end their lives and they will do that. I thought I'd go over this with you all, my brothers. Don't go after no other gods. These other gods are not just false religions. It's worldliness. 
It's the ways of the world. It's whatever you put before God and you love before God. Your family that could be worldly, your friends that could be worldly, whomever, your husband, your wife. You're walking the straight and narrow and they bring something before you to thrust you out of the way of the straight and narrow, out of the way of denying yourself and crucifying your flesh. We're told, do not consent. For those individuals, their heart is not right with the Lord. For if their heart was right with the Lord, by no means would you tell your brother and sister to do something that is against Jesus, to do something that is against the Father. You would not, but you would encourage them to remain on the straight and narrow and to be there with them as well. Keep, our, keep the commandments of the Lord. Obey his voice. Walk after him. Fear him. Respect him. Love him. Cleave unto him and serve him. I don't care how bad you're being afflicted. Persecuted. We are to fight. This is We are on battleground. The enemy wants our soul. We must fight. Submit to the Lord. In everything. Thought I'd share this with you all. My brothers and sisters in Christ. Stay your eyes on the Father and the Son, not on the things of this world. Whatever they doing, that's their business. We are not of this world. We're dead to this world. We're foreigners. We're aliens to this world. Nothing that they're doing, it doesn't involve us. When they command something, it's not aligned with Jesus, they're not talking to us. So if they slay us let it be so this is not our world this is the world of the ungodly this is the world of the unrighteous and in order for them to truly have their peace and safety they must scatter us as it says in scriptures the power of the holy people when they shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people then the end shall come this is when they will call their peace and safety because they will not have their peace and safety. According to scriptures, the world will not have its peace and safety until the power of the holy people is scattered, until the beast rises up and scatters by all means, whether it's uh, tribulation, imprisonment, take your, take your belongings, your spoil, take your life, Whatever it is to disperse the true saints of God that speak the truth that they may have their false peace and their false security, by all means they will do so. Thought I'd share this with you all. Y'all take care.